Hello people, and welcome back to part 21 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much for the support across our last episode where we had a look at how we can build on difficult terrain and indeed brought in some new designs in order to help hide uh, some of the more awkward terrain that makes itself known in Vanilla City Skylines. And yeah, thank you for the support. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope you managed to find some ideas. And indeed, in today's episode, uh, we are going to carry on plowing towards 60k population. So we discussed how to do this at the start of the Downtown Road Network Frame episode quite a few weeks ago now. So, we're going to pop the next tile here today, uh, this one to the left of the current configuration, and then we're going to be doing some Suburban Road Network Frames, how we can transition into a new tile, because sometimes when you're this late into the game, a lot of your infrastructure is already built up against the tile boundary, and making it flow organically into a new area can be somewhat of a challenge. So that's what we'll do today. But to get that tile, we do indeed need 5,000, well, 4,500 more people now. We are slowly ticking over. So we'll briefly run over. Uh, you know, I have some existing suburban frames here that I can expand. And I'm also noticing that there's a little bit of high-rise developing over in this part of the suburb, which I'm happy to have and also expand. And I think I want some more high-rise or some more high-density in and around the Jennifer Cox Garden. So I think this should be quite nice. We'll do some more high-density over here. And then also, you know, don't forget to check land values. Let's have a little look at our land value graphic. See that a lot of these suburbs over this side of last episode's expansion aren't particularly high value. A lot of the houses are at level 3, some are still at level 1. So we can drop some park assets over here to boost land value, help people level up. Which of course is going to bring more people into the city. So I'll start zoning up over in my frames, drop some park assets over here. And then we can start the episode at 60k population and get that next tile. Okay guys, and there is the next milestone. We now have 60,000 population and are classed as a metropolis. We unlock a new tile, planes and a couple of airports, which are pretty redundant now with the introduction of the airports DLC, but we have them anyway. So, what I want today's episode to function as is a lesson in how to avoid the jank that comes with opening a new tile. So we see here, right, we're going to open this one right here. Let's go ahead and purchase it. So, when this is purchased, and this is a problem that I ran into in Vanilla City Skylines a lot when I still played with the 9 tile progression, is the fact that you end up with a very harsh and obvious border between all your existing networks and the new tile. And very often it can be tempting just to expand out these smaller roads and let it grow out. But in doing that, the arterial frames do not flow as they now should. So we can see that we have this, these two arterial roads here, okay? They both connect back into the highway. And these are going to be a really important point of access into this new area alongside a new highway interchange as well once we unlock uh, this next tile at, is it 75,000 population now, I think? Yes, yeah, 75 is the next milestone. And then that will be it. So, today we're going to be deleting a lot of infrastructure and talking about how that's okay. We're going to be bringing in some new train lines, lots of terraforming and some adjustments of old builds. So... Let's talk about how we can work with a broken tile boundary in City Skyline, shall we? So I kind of don't want to put too much editing in today's episode. I want this to very much be kind of a analysis in the thought process behind how we expand and break this very obvious border that we're left with with the edge of a tile. And we're going to delete a lot of stuff today. So let's start out with this main arterial frame here, okay, that flows um, actually all the way into downtown now. And we're going to rip it all out, okay? Everything's going to go. Just go away. Uh, these roads will also need to go. Any service buildings will also be need to uh, be temporarily, re or temporarily relocated. There we go. Uh, this monorail is going to have to just move for a tiny bit, as are all of these frames here. And indeed, all of these assets. So we've covered this a few times in the Noobs Guide now, and the take-home point is don't be afraid to delete existing infrastructure in order to allow new ideas to come to fruition. Alright? Wonderful. I want to start using some of my content creator roads now, and I think I'm feeling at the six lane American Stone Bridge. If you don't have this content creator back, it is certainly one of the better ones. I will leave a link down to Instant Game below where you can come and pick it up. Really worth getting if you don't have it. Okay, and then I'm just going to start bringing this down, okay? So we're going to get a nice different uh, colored pavement on here. It's almost like a brown tile. Do quite enjoy it, it's quite nice. Okay, and then we're going to come out a little bit further. Then let's start to ascend here by a distance of 12 tiles. And we're going to want to come up with four steps with these content creator roads. Okay, and this is where we're going to flow over with a bridge. However, 
the train line is here, alright? So we can do some nice things with the train line now. So let's break this connection. We don't really need this one to continue anymore. And coming into our train lines, I never really use the one-way train lines um, like at all, like ever. So I think we're going to do that as something a little bit different today, alright? So I'm going to snap to a road guideline of the current existing rail network. And then I'm going to have this run all the way down here, okay? And then again, snap to the road guideline. So what this is going to do, like, it's just doing this, right? But we're just widening it out. It's just a, the tracks are separated onto their own lines. But I think once we have this alongside existing rail infrastructure, like the rail station, it's really going to help add sort of a little bit more importance, more layers of depth into our train network, which is going to be such an important feature of the view between the, the broken tar boundary today. So, I'm going to run with the one-way roads, or one-way tracks, rather. And then we will find a place to bring it out. Let's see what we can do over here. Let's go for this connection. Let's go for... Can we squeeze it in this side? Yes, we can. Wonderful. And then we will downgrade this way into one-way. This will connect into here. And then this can come not like that. <laughs> That's not what I want to do. Try that one again. There we go. Fantastic, and then switch our directions around so it's all flowing in the same direction. Okay, now I have my main lines in. We can carry on bringing that bridge straight across. Hopefully we should have just enough room by the looks of things. Although maybe we want to come out like a touch more. There we go. That looks a little bit more appropriate to me, doesn't it? And then we can just remeasure our dip to find out it was a distance of 2680. Let's repeat that on this sign as well. And there we go. And then this can now just sort of sit here and be ready to be expanded later on in the episode. But already we can see the point of this now, right? We've created some more heavier looking transport infrastructure. I'm really happy with the inclusion of the one-way tracks here to bulk out our rail network a little bit, right? Very nice. Happy with this so far. So let's do a little bit of forest brushing now just so we can see what we're working with a little bit clearer. And now we've got some uh, serious repairs to make to this road network frame here. So let's have a little look at this. So I do believe there are bus lines flowing on this road here. Yes, there are. So in that case, then we will use our uh, six-lane road with bus lanes. We upgrade this entire section. That's fine by me. And then we will move back into our regular four-lane roads. And we're going to do some nice curvatures here. Okay, of course, all these buildings here are going to be lost you know i don't worry about that either like buildings being lost the, the most amount you're losing here is a little bit of low density residential or a little bit low density commercial like who cares <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter just just let it break you can always rebuild it replace it it's absolutely fine so i'm just using the curve rule tool here and snap into road guideline frames so we could put a roundabout at this junction but i'm pretty happy with the aesthetic of sort of the big important uh sort of crossroad junction so I'm happy with that. Let's also now re-amend the monorail line that's going to come through this area. Let's go ahead and grab the monorail tracks. And then actually decide where it's going to flow out from. Like from this side here. So I do like this commercial alongside the road. So I'm probably not going to remove that. But we will start to change the shape of it from here. Okay. So let's come over straight over the road. And then we'll see if we can grab. Let's come off all of our snappings while we're doing this. Nice curve over the road there like that. I think that's quite nice, right? And then just a gentle little curve back into the existing frame. And then that should allow the monorail network now to continue flowing in the area. Which is going to be fantastic. We also lost a road connection to the train station. So we want to make sure that we uh, reintroduce this as well. Otherwise that will die. But let's see if we can come in straight on the corner there. I'm happy with that. Let's also go for a treed road here now too. And perhaps upgrade some of those trees into a touch of live oak, if we like. And again, during our detail and time lapse today now, um, there's brand new green belt and walkability patterns that have uh, introduced themselves into the city now. Which, of course, over these uh, many episodes in this series, you now know your favourite parts and designs uh, to fill these sorts of areas out. Okay, but just look how our first neighbourhood now was bended uh, to the will of the new tile. We've just amended some curves. Uh, brought in some new important looking infrastructure alongside expanded um, existing infrastructure. 
I hope you can see the purpose of today's episode, okay? Things are changing, and things are growing and getting better. And I, I'm quite happy with this so far, I think. So, of course, all these spaces, indeed, some of these service assets will want to be uh, relocated just a tiny, tiny bit, for which we can accommodate that, and we'll detail all these up during our time lapse today. But that's it for the initial sort of broken road frame uh, to allow the arterial roads to flow into the new tile. Uh, let's have a little talk about what's going to happen with the train line and the slope uh, back down towards the downtown. Okay, so now we'll talk about extending the train line down against a broken tile boundary and how we can work with this. So this is a quirk unique to Diamond Coast and indeed you will only encounter this problem if you're following my exact tile unlocks, which I know a few of you actually are. So what I want to do is actually break all of the train lines up until where the train station ends because that's the height that we're going to want to pick out and slope to, all right? This entire road here, at least up until a point, probably about here I think, it now has to come out. Okay, so leave your game pause while you're doing this because this will take out a big chunk of infrastructure. And also your intercity trains will stop flowing as well because of course the train line is broken now. Alright, and that's going to be grand. That's going to take out an enormous bit of infrastructure for us. We now want to do some fair amount of terraforming work. So if we were to draw the train line just straight down to meet up with the current existing connection. It's going to be up and down. This terrain's massively unfriendly, so it's not what we want. Come into our level terrain. I'm going to grab the height that the rails are sat at. And then I want to allow this sort of level of terraforming to make itself known up until the slope appears. Okay. Now again, all this very harsh ridge here is being caused by the housing, which you can just delete. Okay, there we go. It's gone away now. And then this seems like a sensible point. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's now grab our slope tool. We're going to right click the height that we've just terraformed out to at the same layer as the rail lines at the top. So before we do the slope, I just want to prepare the bottom layer here. So let's do a touch of level terrain just to create a little bit of layer of depth between the road and this new uh, tile space. And we're going to have some really nice uh, sunken transport infrastructure today. It should be quite an interesting build. Okay, so let's bring this road out now. We're going to elevate it up uh, with our American six lane stone bridge again. We'll also like to come onto a road length snap. Okay, we'll also allow another archway to appear at its full length, which we'll go to. Let's actually remeasure that one. What was the distance here? 2920. Can we repeat that? 2940 there. That should give us some equidistant archways. And then now as the bridge comes back into the land over here, I want to have the land mass meet it so it comes back down to earth again, for which we can just use a little bit of level terrain. No problem at all. Now if you're happy to not do any terraforming and work with terrains that are this unfriendly in Diamond Coast, by all means go for it. Um, it really is personal preference. Okay, and that can flow off on over there now. This now gives us the opportunity to slope out the terrains. So let's come ahead and grab that height again. We're going to right click that. And then from the bottom of where we want the slope to start, we're now just going to right click or left click and drag all the way up to the top. And this is going to slope out the entire terrain for us and give us a little bit more breathing room. Okay, so you know how much more of a sensible gradient this is back up the hill. Really worth doing, just taking some time to you know, sculpt the land and the, the layers around it. And we have the ability to sell soil now. So let's bring this, I don't want this quite wide because we're also going to be pairing this eventually with an intercity train network, which we will cover uh, during its own episode as opposed to today, which is very much uh, infrastructure and sort of tutorial in broken tile boundaries, but we can still take home some ideas. Let's now come back into our one-way train tracks. I'm going to snap to a road guideline with a straight tool because we want to align it uh, to sit flush with the rail lines. So, this is going to come all the way down, and because of our current existing preparations, this should be snapping in with the road guidelines here. Yes, it does. Fantastic. So, let's bring it down. And then we're one tile over. We know we can draw this straight back up and snap perfectly parallel with these one-way train networks. Okay, and already, it's looking a lot more important, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, even just picking out an asset in a tab doesn't have to be specifically rail, but, you know, something that you don't usually use can lead to a new idea forming, like sort of doubled up one-way train lines like I'm sort of working with here today. Okay. Fantastic. Let's also break this line here. And then we want to re-amend the position now. So I'm going to have this 
come under the bridge. That's good for me. We're going to come on to a curve road tour. We're going to create a nice gentle curve up to the one-way network. And then at this point, the one-way tracks can finish. And we'll have that there. Of course, just amend the direction so the trains can continue to flow, which they now can. So the line that came out of the station now no longer needs to be reinstated. Because this is the... It's like a bypass line, right? It's like the content creator stations, but we've made our own bypass. So any trains that are coming to this station can and then immediately leave again. And anyone that needs to go deeper into the city have the one-way network to traverse. Which of course has lots of detail and opportunities within it as well. So you'll notice we've lost an enormous amount of housing here now. Um, which is fine. Okay, you know, it's not really a problem. We can always just redraw these in. Indeed, the existing frames and will still match perfectly to what you had in already. It's just we needed them to be terraformed out so they sit uh, properly against the slope, which they now do, which is great. Okay, wonderful. So we can get these all re redrawn in again, get some more housing zoned up, but we'll worry about that at a later date. So these are intercity lines, okay, during our intercity train network episode, and we talked very heavily about how important it is to keep uh, intercity and internal train and cargo train networks all separate from each other uh, mixing and matching all on the same line will eventually lead to train traffic so with this in mind i know i have an intercity station here i will eventually have uh, an internal train station over this site as well so let's prepare for that to happen i'm going to do a little bit of terraforming here just to scoop out some of this more awkward landmass we'll drop that in we will very temporarily just throw in um, a station that we like. I guess it would be nice to use the vanilla one uh, just because there's already a vanilla one here. We can sort of back them onto each other like this, okay? But again, I think it's a distance that I want to be closer, isn't it? So, you know, let's have a little look now. Do I want a one-way track that now flows again to expand my rail infrastructure? But this time, this is, of course, going to be internal trains. And I think I do. I think I'm very much on board with that thought process and we've definitely got a little bit more room to bring this in so we'll just slightly amend the initial holding frame for the station and then we can have our internal train network uh, start to flow through here uh, it will eventually come out into this tile because this tile over here and um, this one to the right of the sort of green city suburb will be the last one that we unlock so eventually this internal train network will flow into this tile but for right now we can't we need to hit 75k population before that however the internal train network certainly can uh, start coming down this way and sort of factoring itself in uh, to the rest of the city now which a lot of the new tile will rely uh, heavily on train and uh, tram transport too okay again let's just amend any new positions that make themselves known with the new spacings Let's align again our intercity and internal train networks. There's another possibility for internal intercity train convergence here uh, with another station, with which we can absolutely do that. And then let's also grab a curve tool with the road guideline, a nice sensible curve. And now we're starting to see these much larger, more important vanilla looking train networks begin to develop in and around the city, okay? Just by preparing our next tile to function like this. I think it's something that we can all get on board with, isn't it? So I'm happy with this right now. And of course, there's lots of rock detailing, overgrowth and fence detail to be had around these new train networks. Of which we can have a brief discussion before we move on to sort of the roads of the next area. Um, oil, or, or actually oil fence, sorry. Uh, oil fence is a, a most welcome addition uh, to your train lines. If we can very briefly upgrade a couple of sections of this farm fence in. It doesn't seem to be... Playing that well. Let's try it this side instead. Okay, so it's slightly more industrial looking, but it certainly gives a more secure border, doesn't it, than farm fencing. Of course, it depends where you are. If you're a little bit more rural, then perhaps farm fencing would be appropriate. But for me, I think I'm going to shelter the suburb uh, from this new train development with a lot of ore fencing today. But again, personal preference. If you've, You can use park hedges if you want, you know, with the prop line tool. No, it's all down to what you enjoy, whatever you think looks good. That's very much sort of what you should run with. Okay, so we now have uh, one uh, internal and intercity train transfer point. And of course, you can imagine what's going to be happening uh, with uh, pedestrian walking pathways over here as well. 
Uh, let's use some of our content creator pathways, the American ones, which we never ever use because I nearly always forget that they actually exist. So let's see what we want to do. Let's come up with a little three step elevation here. And this one's got sort of a nice little red brick pillar on it. It is quite enjoyable. I do, I do like this one. Okay, and then let's have it come over that way. That's going to be fine for me. Let's also do a big wide stretch here and then we'll do some curves as well. Let's bring out a little probably a two step curve each time. A cost of 64. Is that going to be appropriate do we think? Yeah we can get a little curvature on down here. Bring another little 64 stretch out here as well. There we go. And then just allow it to meet back down with the road. Then it can connect in. And again there's larger detail opportunities around here now. Rather than just bringing the path network you know, straight back down to earth. Maybe that allow the development of some sort of mini rock gardens within a loop as it comes back down the path. If you play with Network Multi-Tool on the PC, there is a really easy way to deal with this with that mod. But you get the general consensus, right? You can now just piece together your favourite detailing palettes. And then uh, you might actually downgrade uh, the trees on this road into something a little bit more sensible because the live oaks are breaching it. How about a coconut palm instead? Yes, there we go. Okay, so now we can start to bring in new interesting path networks alongside new and interesting uh, road networks, right? And the city grows and develops now. You know, this is the start of our city. This is where the Noob's Guide started. This is like one of the first roads to be placed down here. And it's all, it's all great, right? It's all growing and developing and growing up. <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice. It's satisfying to do. I do enjoy sort of redeveloping the start of a city like this. And then again, the same thought process can be applied here as we loop down and create a design outside of the station. But again, the point is walkability between intercity and internal trains, okay? More convergence. We, we know this right now, okay? This is another lesson in this sort of thing, okay? Convergence between two different methods. And then exactly the same uh, down by our intercity and uh, monorail sort of switch hub here, right? All lessons that we've picked up over the course of this series and all ideas that you can bring uh, into your own builds. So we're getting a little bit of traffic here actually. That you just uh see this is the problem with traffic lights in vanilla city skylines. Often they make the traffic worse. We will showcase this. Uh, let's come into our traffic routes and we're gonna remove the light and then just watch how the backup drains away now. It's it's kind of stupid isn't it? <laughs> the way that no traffic lights on a junction like that will clear the traffic. It's uh, a problem with the vanilla game, but hopefully something uh, that can be addressed in Cities 2. All right, very nice. So, I'm also feeling the inclusion. So of course this area here um, is prime for development because we will eventually be building our ore quarry uh, down here using the Injuries DLC, but we're not quite there yet. So what I would like to do is indeed include another little content creator station um, if at all possible. It's a distance of 280 down to the road. So if we can complete this, that's 320. That should do us actually. This one right here, this would be the holding frame for the internal station. And I think whilst we've used the content creator station, it would be rude to not sort of mimic this and double it up if we can. But it looks like I do need a slightly more extended road than that. So we can now start to create new and diverse transport hubs by Mimicking and mirroring different types of oh, well, the same station together, right? You know, not everything has to be Sort of different and you know, it kind of looks like from the certain angles It's a new building, isn't it? You know, it's like a new type of train station. I really do appreciate doing stuff like this It's uh brings a nice new sort of layer of diversity into the game. I think if that's not a really pretentious thing to say Okay so let's get our first uh, intercity and internal train networks flowing now, shall we? This should be quite fun. So let's come on to a road guideline. We'll get a nice curve. Let's put that in. Train line will run from here all the way up to our new station. And then back down again. And of course, we can now feed this off up to our hillside suburb. Uh, we can bring an internal train network sort of wrapped around this entire new tile space for it to eventually loop back round and into here. So, you know, but we will spend an episode covering how to set up an internal train network very much in the vein that we did with how to set up an intercity train network. So, you know, all that to come in the Noob's Guide for those of you that are still enjoying this series. 
bring this down. Get this hooked in. So that should be water supplied now. Any minute now, we'll be okay. Yes, there we go. Wonderful. So here's our first internal passenger train. Have a look at the line details. I definitely want to change the model though. Um, let's go for the commuter train, I think. That should be quite a nice one. Again, if you don't have that, that is from the uh, Vehicles of the World Content Creator Pack, which again is available uh, down below via Instant Gaming. Makes a big difference to your sort of service and public transport vehicles. There we go. Cool. So we can hopefully get an impression of what this looks like now if we can catch an intercity train passing by at one of the internals for which we might be able to have a little preview of this here. If we take a spice sample for the episode. There we go. Okay, all of a sudden now we're dealing with much more important looking vanilla train infrastructure. Which is something that I often, when I was sort of a noob playing the game, I struggled with. Um, train lines were very ugly. But a little bit of preparation to the landscape, a little bit of thought and development into how different types of rail lines sit against each other. That can really bring a big difference into these, okay? Cool. So let's talk about hooking up some road networks and then some more terraforming work. And then we can start to detail up and sort of break out of this new tile frame. Okay, so now let's have a little talk about the road network frames that can be brought into this episode. So of course, as the series progresses now, this space will be filled with individual builds, including amusement parks, transport hubs, new town centres or quarries, you know, whatever you guys want to see in the noobs guide. In the new tile, actually get them down in the comments below. Is there a particular build you'd like to see in this area? If there is, then, you know, inform me. But, as we bring out this new tile, there are certain things that we can respect in order to help uh, continually improve the look of the sort of transport infrastructure around the area. And this is very much mimicking the road network frame to really f as frame, again, for lack of a better word, uh, the internal networks here with the train. And what this is going to do is create a real strong almost train corridor, if you like. So if we measure the distance from this small road frame this side, we can see it's a distance of 200. So let's draw from the same node on this side and we'll go for road length as well. Let's double check it was 200. Yes, there we go. So we'll do 200. Okay, and then we can break this. Don't worry about the internal train losing its mind there. That's absolutely fine. And then you can double check here the same distance apart because we have three tiles between the road and the train network. We know that's equidistant now. And we can now let this run uh, perfectly parallel. Okay, it just so happens to be the distance with the train line, which is a happy accident. That wasn't planned at all, <laughs> but I'll take it, okay? And because we did our slope terrain work at the start, it's now going to follow uh, this design very carefully. The okay, game's going to follow the slope. Everything's going to be nice and even. And then what you'll see from the bird's eye view now, and we can even use this opportunity to redevelop some of the zoning that sits uh, directly overlooking the train lines. Okay, so let's bring some of that residential that we lost back in. Okay, we obviously lost nearly a thousand people this episode, but it's all in the process of expansion. And then I hope you can see what this has done now. Okay, it's created a little train corridor, hasn't it? Okay, you know, once this is fenced up and detailed with overgrowths, and all different detailing palettes, this is going to look really fun. All right? You can continue to mimic the sort of local roads that cut through back onto the collectors if you like. You can just draw them up to the adjacent node, uh, unselect the selection, and then redraw them out into new terrains. Yeah, it's all different ideas that can be brought into your own personal preferences now. You maybe want to break it and bring in one, maybe that starts off halfway through and then why doesn't the frame sort of break for a little bit now as well and then we can bring that down and it opens it up for more fencing and perhaps one of our larger rock formations that wasn't relocated during this uh, sort of development here and then we can piece these together in various different shapes and sizes I do believe if you are on the console you do not have the ability to place uh, rock formations this close to one another but you can certainly be creative with them, okay? And then just, you know, the point of a train corridor now flowing through the city. Uh, really nice aesthetic, just that single train line we had before, right? I hope I'm putting that point across nicely, at least anyway. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, so it looks like we can near enough create a, a nice solid connection uh, up to this point here. So let's come back onto our road guideline. And I'd like to bring this out possibly from here. Okay, let's bring 
this road straight out. We can hit the guideline here. That's fine. Let's bring it down to this point as well. And then we can connect it in there. So that's going to connect it into one of our collector roads back onto the mainframe now. Indeed, it looks like there's a slightly more awkward shape developing here, which would be perfect for perhaps a little train spotters park, if we like. Okay. Again, ideas that can be developed later on in the series. So, let's come back into our roads now, and we're going to want to do uh, some pretty heavy level terrain here. So because, again, this is a kind of a problem that is unique to Diamond Coast, the terrain is extremely gnarly on this map. So when we're bringing in big roads like this, we want to make sure we prepare the terrain. Otherwise, as we draw it over, it will look a lot like that, which looks really bad, really ridiculous. And um, this will make the zoning on this road absolutely horrendous. Any builds that span off of it will have to deal with some pretty gnarly terrain changes. So that's why we... Uh, we prepare our landscapes for major road networks. Let's buy some more soil as we begin to terraform this out. And of course, any terraforming jobs in city skylines, they always look really unnatural before they start to fit in. So just bear with it. And why don't I respect this hill that's in the middle? All right, let's bring out our new layer here for our roads to flow on. Okay, and we can really just kind of carve out a nice little round around this mountain. Let's delete these frames that we placed in and we can see now that the Level terrains are starting to meet up with the slope that we painted out at the start of the episode as well. Which is just giving us much more gentle flowing terrain, isn't it? Rather than these larger hills that we have to deal with. There we go. That's going to be fine for me. We'll leave the hill in there. And if anything, it actually becomes sort of a new peak within the Diamond Coast landscape. Now you know there's a couple of little hills and mountains that are in the background. We can now just add one into the foreground here. Do some nice layered suburban stuff with this. Perhaps a unique building that looks out towards the downtown skyline from here. You know, it's all things that are up to your own interpretation and things that you enjoy. Same process here now. Let's level this one out. At least for a good section yet until we can see exactly what's going to happen with it. We do have the need to buy some more soil, which is fine. Okay, so hopefully I'm not doing too much editing in this episode and you guys can... I really get a grasp of the thought process as to how I'm approaching a big expansion like this when we're breaking a tile boundary. Uh, so let's come on now with a six lane road. Why don't we go for a one with trees? Is this going to be acceptable? I think it probably is, right? I think I'm happy with that. Could carry on the brown pavement, but I think it is a little bit almost too much, if you will. Too much brown pavement can really spoil the build. Uh, we also want to give a connection into the train station here. So let's come onto this. Let's have a little look where we can perhaps squeeze this in. And we don't really need this one to do anything different. We'll just leave that there for right now. And then again, these new frames. Yeah, we're not breaking the zone in here. This is going to be fine. And now, you know, span off and go into different areas. Let's bring this one out as a marker. Let's come back into our six lane road over this side and prepare a new slope so we want this one to be the height and then when this six lane road now emanates out we will come into just regular six lane for right now and of course the road or well, the type of road and the road decoration itself will change uh, per build but let's go over that slope so top height set let's slope from the new collector systems that are coming in and then just allow this to come up Exactly the same process that we did with the trains. We're now just making this terrain a lot more friendly for our larger road networks to come up. And it's going to make a difference in the long run, I think. Yeah, you won't have to deal nearly as much with this problem if you're on a re relatively sensible terrain map. It's very much sort of localised to the sort of rougher terrains, if you like. Alright. So, I think I'm happy with this. Let's actually go ahead and throw in roundabout here as well just to sort of anticipate some future traffic distribution if you like of course we'll upgrade uh, all our segments back into what they should be this should be a uh, six lane treed uh, i might actually make this a high speed roundabout and yeah, we could go for a three lane highway one okay gives us some slightly sort of different differentiations within the road network itself and then this can now come back down are we just so happy, perfectly aligned there? There we go, that was a happy accident, wasn't it? And then this can come back through. Okay, so now we're starting to P 
piece together our larger collector and arterial frames on different angles and indeed respecting the topography around them, we can now start to hook in collector roads at different angles. Let's bring in a road guideline again. And then we'll grab a nice big curve tool here, connect it into another guideline, and then hopefully um, a straight connection into another guideline, and then hook back in. And we can now start to carve out these different shapes Slightly more interesting looking frames when we're playing with sort of local roads like this. Bringing curves around new terraformed features that we've looked at. Okay, connecting people through on different elevations. Perhaps this one can come and meet up with this layer now. And of course these are all just road frames, right? They're all subject to change. You know, new builds will come into here. You know, perhaps next episode we'll focus on how to formulate a town centre around a unique building. And also perhaps a build that looks good from this side of the suburb as well, you know? Something that you can see, perhaps a unique. There's lots of different possibilities and designs in store for something like this, alright? But we've created a new little train corridor, brought out some new frames, and really helped to sort of shatter the very harsh tile boundary that we had between the old part of the city and the new. And I think it can be, you know, quite hard to... Do this as well because once you're there is a one by one house there my apologies that is illegal let's get rid of that i <laughs> don't like those yes but you know it's um it can be difficult especially like this far into the game as well like once you're in the late game and your infrastructure is already kind of pretty solidly established it can be difficult to come back and make sure that the sort of road hierarchy and transport networks continue to flow into the new tile spaces you know, just by deleting a little bit of road network and allowing some new detail and walkability opportunities to come through. And indeed, with some new sort of road frames that are going to be panning around this area, then, you know, we can do some things to make it a little bit more tolerable, I think. Alright, fantastic. So these spaces here will definitely flow into the new tile. I imagine what will happen here is we'll bring in another arterial road into another highway interchange in this tile again once we unlock it. Because we're not quite there yet. Alright, so there's one more thing I want to do before we think about a detail in time maps today. And this is going to be uh, reforming the connection on these roads here. Because we're now going to be working with uh, two level crossings that are going to be very, very close to each other. This is not a good idea to do. So we want to make sure that this road here now becomes service road. Okay. So let's bring in another connection on this side here. We'll go for a four lane at road at the moment we will first of all align with our road into the ore area bring off a piece and then hopefully a little curve tool here with a snap to the road guideline will give us a nice gentle curve in it's going to save us some nice zone sizes here as well and then we can bring down this road here although is this going to be the awkward thing where it does it yes it is isn't it it always does that is really irritating <laughs> when it does this, but that's okay. It does delete the station. This is a problem with the uh, content creator stations. Once you place them, yeah, they do sometimes give you a little bit of grief trying to draw things out of them. But you just need to draw the road in first, and then it'll be okay. Just reconnect the train line in with the curve. Grab the line, redrag it, and then everyone's happy. Okay, let's give ourselves a little forest brush so we can see what's happening. And there we go. Okay, so now these frames here can be broken and even perhaps replaced with a walking pathway, you know? You can do that if you like. And then eventually this road uh, will be able to service our ore quarry. And those ore quarry trucks will have access eventually into the highway. Uh, back through these arterial frames back up here. And then of course back down this way and then into this part of the city as well. So they will eventually have options. And of course, there's always the possibility of cargo train lines to come through here too. Right, we've got more room here along the bottom for trains to come and go. And there we go, right, that's the spy sample that we wanted from today. That's what we like. <laughs> okay. And we can even see all this new important infrastructure sitting at the foot of the skyline. Now, you know, it becomes part of the city. Whatever we build anywhere, you know, affects the view at some point. So important that we respect it where we can. However guys, that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. I'm going to carry on bringing in lots more overgrowth between the rail and 
underneath the bridges also reintroduced the ore fence along the entire duration of this new suburb. I just replaced some of that zoning that we lost during the development. You know, you can see what a big difference that made now. Did anything really bad happen from including or from deleting a suburb? Like, no, it's all back now. It's absolutely fine. Just don't need to worry about it. It's, it's totally okay. So yeah, lots more detail along here. Uh, lots more overgrowth and stuff. Uh, hook in our walkability pathways over here again with some more designs with loops and stuff that we can do. Uh, in city skylines, uh, just re-detail the start of the city here. Uh, indeed, with some more walkability and sort of fence and path and overgrowth designs. Uh, indeed, to respect the new monorail now, uh, perhaps a repeated tree pattern at either side of this might be welcome. And then just continue to match up uh, some local road network frames by snapping into guidelines and creating some preset boxes for us to come in and work with in subsequent episodes, whilst also preparing sort of traffic routes uh, for larger, more industrial builds that will come in future episodes as well. Uh, I will also continue to bring out the internal train network and probably throw in a station uh, for the hillside suburbia people to make use of. Again, just so we can constantly see the sort of parallel intercity and internal train networks running uh, right through the heart of the map now, which has been a real big improvement in today's episode, hasn't it? And we no longer have that very obvious harsh border there anymore. Okay, you can see where the tile boundary is closed here. Okay, it's still very obvious. It's very rough. It's also very obvious on this side as well. But we've broken that today. Uh, existing frames have come over and new frames and new transport lines have allowed themselves to become known. But let's detail it up and then we'll be right back.
Okay guys, so let's have a detailing review uh, before we move into the cinematics for today. Um, I brought in some poor man's surface painter using the nature reserve pathway without lights uh, to detail the spaces between the rail lines and I hope you can see the impact that this has. Just makes the ground look a little bit dirtier. You know, it's essentially the poor man's surface painter. And then at night time, we've also brought through some lights to light the pathway as it comes through. And I'm uh, really happy with how this sort of train corridor has turned out in the city. And um, it has a very nice sort of like, you know, corridor vibe, doesn't it? And then of course, lots of overgrowth and tree detailing within the space itself. With our favourite uh, ore industry fence designs everywhere too. Uh, a little bit more of a station frontage outside again with just some very really, uh, specially chosen commercial. A little bit of part life detailing, things that we've covered before. A touch of office zoning and then I've also just zoned up some residential just so this side of the rail has something against it as we now move into this side of the map with our subsequent builds. Also added in a tram depot in preparation for an eventual new tram network that will serve this side of the suburb. Ferrying people back and to from the intercity and internal train station networks. So again, pre-planning more public transport convergence in the future. Uh, over towards the start of the city, I've introduced some uh, really simple and quite effective green belt patterns, uh, just allowing the new uh, sort of curvy road that now flows into the new network to fit a little more organically with some fenced off walkability green spaces, also this side of the suburb as well. And uh, the pathway isn't getting vast amounts of use at the minute, there's actually a fair few people uh, preferring to walk on the bridge, uh, that could be the loop that's actually causing that, but... They're sort of used in both ways, which I'm, I'm happy with. So that's going to be quite nice. And again, just sort of rezoned all this space up here as we now flow through the train corridor in the city. I detailed out some rocks, palms, live oaks and stuff. All the things that were so fond of. I also brought in a, a basic a sort of alpine boreal pine pattern against the fence, which I'm quite happy with too. And more overgrowth in and around the base of the new sort of elevated networks. I'd like to make a point here as well, is, you know, when we do all this terraforming work, we can see the impact it has now, right? Once the grand scheme of the build comes together, you know, where we did our sort of tiered campus, we cut out that layer along this height here where the metros go in now. We have an elevated cycle highway, then the highway itself, and then a monorail, then the roads, and now a sunken train network. So playing with terraforming and, you know, carving out and pre-preparing these spaces this is an example of what it brings, all right? It's sort of a nice, multi-layered, varied sort of city. You know, not everything is just flat and on the same layer. We're not dealing with any horrific, nasty terrain that's generated from just placing assets on the terrain as the way the map comes. This is your spice sample for the purpose of terraforming, preparing different layers, all right? We've also added some walkability back and to between the uh, other intercity and internal train network switch point. And like I've mentioned today, we will spend an episode um, once we unlock the next tile on talking about how to set up an internal train network line uh, in a similar vein, sort of a sister episode to the intercity uh, train network designs that we've worked on. And then it now flows out through this way and then into the uh, hillside suburbia, which now has its own station, again with some more part designs and pathways. A carefully chosen commercial which has been cut away by more of that ore industry fence around the train network and uh, you know if it helps the earthquake sensors blend in a little bit more too which are helping to sink power uh, through to the suburb for us so it all comes together quite nicely and then again as we continue to expand the internal train network line we're playing with some new heights here we can maybe get a little train bridge that passes alongside the mountain and then eventually cuts through in and around the ore quarry and then plenty more designs to have over that side as well but otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. Well, like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the episode, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then of course, please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Uh, there would have been several mentions of Instant Gaming today. You can find that link down below if you're missing any of the DLCs that we've used in the Noob's Guide episode today. Uh, all really cheap, and it does help support the channel directly. Again, not too much of a mass expansion in this episode. It's very much preparing the next area. And I hope you've managed to pick up some tips on how you can get rid of that very awkward and quite obvious tile boundary that you do tend to run into in the late game in City Skylines. You know, don't be afraid to delete old infrastructure, re-amend new arterial and collector frames to come in and flow into the new spaces. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, you've seen today 
the most that we lost was a little bit of residential zoning and maybe a few commercial spaces. So it's not a big deal. Don't be afraid to change things as the city grows and develops. And I hope you've enjoyed the sort of the proof is in the pudding, right? Well, again, the proof is in the egg. <laughs> I think is the saying now. Uh, really happy with the train corridor. And we've now got a nice boundary to jump over into the new tile. Uh, where again, please get your comments down below as we head towards the end of the noobs guide. Uh, you know, what builds do you want to see? We'll certainly do another town centre design. Uh, we'll also do some things with amusement parks. Uh, lots more exciting things to come, but if you have anything specific, let me know down below. Please do hang around for some cinematics, but otherwise we'll shut up and I will leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, enjoy the rest of your day.